Are you just going to sit there? Yeah. Okay. I can do this. I have an audience. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> calm down, calm down. Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a get ready with me video. I haven't filmed for a whole week because um, last week I was at a show and I just basically was singing and performing like no other and I did a head flip, a hair flip. If you guys watch my vlog, you will know that I did that and then my necklace just smacked me in my face and I got this big scar right here. So I wanted to leave my face alone and let it heal before I start like pounding at it again. So um, it's kind of healed. I put Neosporin on it. It looks like it's not gonna leave a scar hopefully, but that's wishful thinking. Let's just leave it alone and just focus on something else. But this is a get ready with me video. I wanted to film something because I promised I would do like two to three videos a week and this week I only did like um, two and that's because I loaded up from last week. So <sighs> today is St. Patrick's Day. That's why I'm wearing green. So I wanna be festive. And by the time I post this video, it's probably a day after St. Patrick's Day. So I just wanted to Wish you guys a happy St. Patrick's Day and wear green so you don't get pinched. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Minnie and I am a Vietnamese singer. So if you are interested in connecting with me, just go ahead and press the subscribe button right there and uh, let's stay connected. Today I'm going to be singing in California, which is a good thing because I don't have to travel and feel tired. But at the same time, last night I wasn't sleeping much because even though I'm singing in town, I still have it in my mind like, oh, I have to perform. so. I kept looking at the clock, it was like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and now it's literally like um, 3.30 and I'm getting ready right now. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to start off with some moisturizer. This is the Tatcha Water Cream. I just want to talk a little bit about this because this stuff so far is amazing. I mean, I've used La Prairie, La Sicily, <laughs> La Sicily, just Sicily and La Mer and I spent thousands and thousands of dollars trying to find the right moisturizer that wouldn't break me out and I even tried like argan oil, a bunch of stuff. You guys saw my vlog that I broke out a lot and I had to recover from that. So I got this because everyone was raving about it and I didn't want to jump the gun yet and say it was amazing. So I tried it out for three weeks now and so far it has not been breaking me out. So, oh my God, hallelujah. <laughs> I found something that doesn't break me out and moisturize my skin and it doesn't feel so heavy. It feels moisturizing enough because most of the time my skin, it dries up and cracks up in my face and I just kind of leave it alone because I don't want to break out. So I end up not wearing anything at all. But this is a miracle worker for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but for me so far it works. So moisturize my face, finally. I don't want to like scrape at my face all the time because it's so dry. I'm gonna moisturize with this and then start my makeup. So I have that moisturizer on and now I'm going to move on to primer, Smashbox, Photo Finish Primer. I like this primer better than the cream ones. I feel like this one is a more silicone base and it feels more smooth. I don't think I have that big of a pore unless you're really getting close to my face and like super macro lens my pores. This one makes me feel more comfortable and I feel I feel good. Like sometimes when you wear a product and you feel good, it just makes everything better. Like your your thoughts, your your looks, your just everything just brightens up. I don't know. Oh, by the way, I'm here at my other house. This is my bedroom, the infamous bedroom that I filmed the last drop my music video. So if you guys didn't get a chance, check it out. I will link it below. It is an awesome, super sexy, steamy music video. I'm sure you'll like it. Maybe not for me, but maybe for the guy. <laughs> Moving on to concealer, I'm going to use the Shape Tape light neutral concealer. I don't know these names. I mean, seriously, I should memorize it by now. <sighs> the Tarte Shape Tape Light Neutral. Conceal under my eyes. I recently started to conceal before foundation because I feel like it's more um, coverage and I look much more uh, fresh and um, smooth and flawless. I'm going to use my beauty blender and blend that baby out. Give it a nice bounce on my face to give that full coverage. I'm at my other house, so I don't have any lighting equipment. So if the lighting is a little bit off, sorry guys, but this is the best I can do here with no lighting equipment. This is just natural lighting coming from my window right here. So, sorry. Taking that foundation with my beauty blender and just add more coverage. 
So this foundation is a little bit like darker for my skin, but it's okay because in the areas right here, I want to darken out and kind of give it a contour. You can always brighten it up with a lighter concealer if you can if your uh, foundation is too dark. Okay, I think I'm covering that scar on my nose a little bit good. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh my gosh. I need to calm down today. I should not like go crazy and create another scar on my face. Not cute. Let's move on to contour. I want to do that first and get it over with. <sighs> I'm using the uh, Burberry contour stick in the number... So bad at this. Dark number two. I'm going to contour my face with this right here. Give it a nice sculpt right there and right here. And then I'm going to slightly on top here to warm up my forehead, bring more attention to the T-zone, and then give a nice contour line right here on my nose. The skinnier, the better. It makes your nose more snatched and more pinched, and I like a pinched nose. I feel like an anime character or a cartoon character, a Disney character, because I feel like... <laughs> Using the Beauty Blender, once again, I'm going to just... Blend this out before it dries because once it's dried, it's like really hard to move. So blend it out and now I'm um, blending out my nose contour. I'm gonna like take a while with this because contouring on your nose is so like, uh, I'm just gonna stay quiet. <laughs> okay, so that should be a good blend and now I'm going to move on to eyebrows. Eyebrows! Let's get some expression on this face. For eyebrows, I'm going to use my Dior Show Brow Styler in the number, here we go again, oh my god. Universal Dark Brown number two. I have two, that's why I'm always confused. So I have to really, really look and see. The reason why I have two because I like to keep the ends of my eyebrows dark and the front of my eyebrows lighter. So it creates that ombre effect. So this one is Universal Brown number one and this is Universal number two. So I'm gonna use the two, the darker one, on my outer edges of my eyebrows. This is where the lighter brow styler comes in and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to draw the hair strokes in right here. Do a nice flicker up. Eyebrows are almost done. I'm going to add a little bit of texture. Okay. By using my Anastasia eyebrow gel in the color chocolate. I'm gonna brush it over my natural hairs and blend it in with the rest of the eyebrow that I just drew in. This is kind of to enhance your natural hairs and show that there is some hair there. <laughs> I got some hair. There it is. Moving on to eyeshadow. I'm going to use the Naked 3 palette because this is the only thing I have in my bag, my travel bag, and everything is at home at my other place, so... Just deal with what you have. Using my Hakuhodo brush number S142, I'm going to go into the color Factory to give it a nice transitioning transitioning color. Tongue twister. Okay, let's go in here in the outer corners and then kind of give it a nice rounded effect right there. Round your eyeball and then blend out. Pull it out a little bit. Today's show is in Rosemead and it's very close to where I live, about 40 minutes. It's going to be a fundraiser for the hospital. When the promoter called me, they were like, can you sing English? And I was like, what? <laughs> if you guys follow my singing career, I'm a Vietnamese singer and most of the time, I only sing English on my albums because I feel like my audience that actually listen to my music, likes to hear English songs and more newer, updated um, sounds and younger music, basically something new, refreshing. Whereas if I were to go perform a live show, I would sing old school songs because a lot of the people who show up to the concerts are like my parents, they're much older and 
the Vietnamese music. That's just how it's been for all the years that I've been singing. So that's what I know. For example, if I like sing an original composition of mine at a live show, the people there are gonna be like, what is she doing? And they're gonna look at me all weird and they're not gonna dance at all. But the minute I sing a old school goodie song, Vietnamese style, they're gonna be like up and dancing and just enjoying the time of their lives, like seriously. So when this guy was like, can you sing English songs? And I was like, oh my God, did some, like, did I just miss something? So <laughs> since I've been singing a lot of Vietnamese songs over and over and over throughout the years, Today I have to sing an English song, so I'm like, oh my god, what am I gonna sing? Because <laughs> I have to consider the band as well. Sometimes my my original composition is is more complex, and you need more like synthetic sounds and all that sound, like or you know, like you need all that stuff. So I think today it's it's like a one man band. I'm not sure, but it is for a hospital, so most of the people there are. Um, American people. So I'm like, oh, interesting. They booked a Vietnamese singer. <laughs> Anywho, that is like the bulk of my career. I've been singing Vietnamese old school songs over and over and over and over again. So I've been singing for like 15 years now, I think. Yes, since 2003. I started 2002, but I really debuted in 2003. April. So I'm going to smoke out my under eye, my lash line with the same color. And also add a little bit of a dark part right here. And smoke out the bottom right here. It's kind of frustrating to sing Vietnamese and then like have a different kind of sound for your CD. Because then I feel so bad when older people buy my CD hoping to see like the stuff that they see on the DVDs like which is old school stuff they get new stuff so I'm kind of like I don't know if you would listen to this but okay I'm going to uh, crease out this area right here give it more definition with the same color dark part people always ask me this question why did you leave Asia <laughs> let me just tell you <laughs> give me a moment while I finish smoking out my other bottom lash Next, I'm going to go into the color Liar right here and then put it on my lids. This palette is seriously so pretty. All the colors are just like pretty. Let's move on to eyeliner. I'm going to use the Shu Amura eyeliner and line my upper lash line and my bottom lash line. I'm back now. My eyes are done. My camera just went off on me, so I don't know what was missing, but I got my eyes done. I lined the top and the bottom line, or lash line, and now I'm moving on to mascara. I'm going to curl my lashes with this Tweezer Man curler and then apply my Bad Girl Bang mascara. I love, 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 love that. Right here, this one. I'm going really quick because I want to have enough time so I can breathe and then rehearse and all that stuff and just collect myself together and just calm before I perform. So, going really quick. But anyway, um, back to my story. What was I saying? People always ask me for a long period of time in the beginning why I left. And it's kind of like, I don't know how to answer that, but a lot of people were just kind of coming up to me and were like, you know, you're so ungrateful because they've done so many things for you and, and how dare you leave them. They discovered you and a lot of things and I just kind of was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, our contract had ended, but you know, um, truth be told, there was no contract to start with. I just kind of started my career by sending them a demo. I got a call back and then since I was so young at the time, I was like 16 or something like that, and they were like, so you're kind of young, so why don't you join this group? So I joined this group and we did a two-year contract for it's not really a contract, it's more like a verbal contract. Like, oh, let's do this group for two years and then you can go solo after that. Because originally we both wanted to go solo and then we agreed to do two years and after two years, we were, you know, we would collect. <laughs> we we kind of just were like put together and we kind of tried, we, we tried our best. Hold on, let me get this mascara on real quick because I don't got no time. Okay, let's coat this mascara real quick. A lot, a lot, a lot of layers. Mascara is on. Let's move on to baking my face. I'm going to use La Prairie Translucent Powder and my Beauty Blender and bake underneath my eyes, on my nose, and a little bit on my chin and a tad bit on my forehead. Right here, underneath the eyes. 
push it into your skin like that. It'll bake better. So we were a group, actually there were three of us, and it took them like two years before I came into the picture to find a member to join the group. And then when I came in the picture, it was the third person, which was me. And then by the time we were about to debut, um, the one of the member decided she wanted to go solo. So then we were delayed and we we're supposed to look for a third member. But in the end, we're like, you know, um, you guys are wasting a lot of time. So let's just debut as a duo. So that's what we ended up doing. The third member actually went solo on her own and lived their wildest dreams. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so now there were two of us and we debuted as Purity. Originally it was supposed to be called Paper Hearts because <laughs> it was supposed to be something easy for Vietnamese people to pronounce. But my sister was like, why don't you call yourself Purity? Because we were like drinking water. And it was like, oh, you guys are pure and young and fresh. So <laughs> let's call yourself Purity, but let's put it with an I. So you're pure. And I'm like, oh, okay. I thought it was kind of like dumb. But then when we had a meeting, I said purity. And then they're like, oh my God, that's so easy for people to pronounce, purity. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we'll go with purity then. <laughs> so that's how purity came about. Water. This is the best thing you can do to take care of yourself and your skin. This is also part of this look. <laughs> Indulge in water for a better skin. Anyway, um, working together for two years and we did our best and they really didn't know what to do with us because we were like um, in the middle of should we go the American route or should we go the Vietnamese route? We didn't know what to do, but they were kind of like so busy with their channel and so we were just like, okay, what should we do? So we just kind of like each just picked up a pen and wrote our own songs because if we didn't, we wouldn't have a song for a video. So we would try to create our own even though we didn't know how to. I just like put a bunch of like gibberish together and it was like, okay, let's just do this. And they're like, okay. So um, we had the freedom to do what we wanted to do, but we came in thinking that they were going to kind of give us um, a direction, but they didn't. So after two years of working with each other and we came up on that time and we're like, okay, it's time for us to go solo. And then the moment we went solo, all of a sudden they have more advice of what should we should do like we should sing more Vietnamese songs more old-school song but at the same time at that time it was a big hit for the old-school music to come back so we had to sing a lot a lot a lot a lot of old-school music like stuff that was sang like 20 years ago by like I don't know two generations before us so it was kind of like nostalgic for people to hear that we didn't have a lot of control of what we wanted to sing so fast forward eight years later we're kind of like okay I know that you know people like oldies because oldies is always a goodie but at the same time you know music people want to be able to create you know something artistic and the main reason is basically very simple you have different directions of where you want to go with music I want to go for something new which I love doing the old but you know at a certain time I want something on my own I want to create something kind of like how I'm creating this makeup right here I just want to do my own thing also the reason why we split too because both of us were like different types of music. My partner was more softer kind, more girly, and I was more like, ah, I need to sing like dominatrix singer. Like I need to be Angelina Jolie, you know, just, just basically different styles of music. And to a certain point, you, you want to create your own style and kind of like be your own, you know, you know, let's continue on my makeup because I don't want to forget about it. Let's put on my eyelashes before I, I keep like, ugh, or I run out of time. I will admit that singing the old school stuff would help me get a lot more gigs, more shows, and you make more money, to be quite honest. But if you're singing your own new materials and like trying to make new music and stuff, you're not going to sell a lot of CDs and you're not going to pick up on a lot of shows because, like I said earlier, a lot of people who go to your shows are more older generations and they don't really understand that, that kind of music that you do unless you're singing the old school stuff. So I had to find a balance between that and that's why my CDs were more modern, hip, young music and my live shows were more like old school stuff. So it was just a weird balance for me. I was like floating in like limbo and I'm still kind of floating in limbo, kind of like, uh. <laughs> People really get mad at you for leaving, just giving you all this type of hate and emails and stuff because they feel like you were ungrateful, but that's not true because honestly, we, worked together as much as we could and when I first started singing I sent a demo I reached out to them and it's a great thing that they give you a platform to perform but at the same time you have to work if you don't work you're gonna go you're gonna you're gonna come and go and 
eventually you're going to disappear. So it has to be a two-way thing where the company and you as an artist has to build together. And if things don't work out, you just, you know, you kind of break up. Kind of like when you go to work, like if your first job, you're not going to like stay at your first job forever, especially if you're not happy with, with, with what you're doing. Let's say, for example, you go to an office job, you're there nine to five, you hate your boss or whatever it is, whatever conflict you have, you're not going to stay there forever and be like, oh my God, I hate my job, but I'm going to be forever grateful because this job is my first job and they gave me the opportunity to work in this um, office. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense, but you have to kind of live your life out how you want to live it and be happy with it. And for me, even though I was making a lot of money and going to shows a lot, I wasn't happy with the content that was coming out and I wanted desperately, I was thirsting for something new and something that's my own. Like I didn't want to sing any covers anymore and so at, some, at a certain point I was like, okay, I gotta get out of this and find a way to make myself happy because when I look back, I don't want to look back at something and say that I never achieved anything. I never made something of my own. So I just was like, okay, you know, we just split and went our separate ways and Fast forward, I sent the demo to Paris by Night. So people always say Paris by Night stole me. People can't steal you. You have to kind of reach out and find your own job. And like, I had to redo from the beginning. I had to start from square A and like sent a demo to them and be like, look, um, I'm a singer. I don't know if you know me, but I, I can do this. I can do that, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And then they were more impressed that I was sending a resume because most people don't send resumes. They're kind of just like um, through word of mouth. I don't know. So mine was like literally a resume with a disc and all that good stuff. So it was like, you know, very professional. Let me put the slashes on real quick. For the Paris by Night run, it was great too. I mean, I appreciate everything they've done for me, but at the same time, people always ask, why did you guys split? To me, the same thing. We have different directions in music. They're more old school. They tried new school, and like I said, new school don't sell. Nobody gonna buy new school stuff. And the younger kids, they're not listening to Vietnamese music anymore. They're actually listening to Korean or American or Japanese. Like Vietnamese music, like I don't see my sisters listening to it. I don't see their friends or like other people. So it's really hard for for you to continue to do that new music stuff. Like again, three times with the group, we have different directions in music. Okay, Asia, we have different direction in music and Paris Night, we have three, same reason, different direction in music. So you gotta do what you gotta do to make yourself happy in life because that's the only thing that comes down to it, okay? And that's why today I'm kind of like, what? I'm singing in English? That is so weird. I'm not prepared for it. What am I gonna do now? So now I have to go back and find an English song to sing because I'm so used to the old, you know, cha-cha-cha live stuff. And I'm like kind of freaking out because I haven't even like looked through my English songs to see what I'm gonna sing because, oh my God, I've been like so soaked up in like oldies for live show, but never sing my originals for live show. So this is gonna be very interesting for me. So if you guys wanna check out how, how I did, which I'm going to do in a few hours and film for my vlog. Check out my vlogs. I do everyday vlogs just to better myself as a person and speak in front of the camera. Seriously, like 10, like even, yeah, 10 years ago, even starting like last year, I could speak in front of the camera. So this is a way to better myself as a human being. All right, let's put this other lash on before it dries. Okay, so that is the story. Like everything in the industry is not smooth sailing. Nobody owns you. Everyone has to work together to become something, to make something, to build something. So the next time you guys see me, don't be trying to like say, oh, you know how dare you leave them, you ungrateful person. They discovered you, they owned you. I was like, honestly, you kind of own yourself. Everything that you do in your life, really falls back on you if you fail if you succeed or whatever it's really on you because it's how you come about with your career and your life nobody owns me except myself okay i feel like much happier doing my own music i mean i feel like i've accomplished oh i keep fumbling over my words i feel like i accomplish a lot and i'm proud of my work and my music because it's just something that I actually did from square A to square Z. Like, that's just something where I really, I really feel um, worth, what do you call it? Worth it. <laughs> okay, does it make sense? Right now I'm happier than ever. I feel like I'm not as stressed. I'm not as like, you know, angry all the time. I felt kind of like I wasn't doing anything to contribute to my life and 
the community and society, I just felt like I was just kind of singing the same thing, dragging my feet. I mean, it was great, and I, I appreciate, like, the oldies and all that stuff, but for me, I just felt like, can't we have a balance? Let's have a balance. But it was literally just one way. So I was like, okay, let's have it my way now. Um, go my way. <laughs> what is that song? I need it my way. <laughs> okay. Throughout the years, no contract. It was very verbal, kind of like, do you want to sing for me? All right, I'll sing for you, and kind of like that. I, I think I was the only singer, so I heard, because I'm not sure how other singers work, and I never really know what's going on, but um, for me, I've never had a contract, so I don't know what it's like. And all my CDs, they're all produced by myself, so all these people are like saying the company like produced their CDs for them. I'm like, what is it like? <laughs> because for me, it was all my money and all my um, efforts into making a CD. So like I said, it's not smooth sailing. You got to do stuff yourself or else you're never going to get a project out, especially in the time that I came in. And at that time, it was starting to decline for CDs. So a company is not going to put out a CD for you knowing that the industry, the streaming, the burning, and all that stuff is going to um, not benefit them. So it's all on you to make your own stuff happen. Make it happen. Which leads to my project, my CD. People keep asking me if I'm going to have another album, and honestly, right now I'm contemplating no because I feel like, you know, come on, like 2018 people, I'm not gonna buy a CD anymore. So, you know? And I already made my two CDs, or actually my three, uh, ghastly today um and i already made my three cds prior knowing that i wasn't going to make any profit from it so i've already accomplished that i feel good about it and this ne this next project i feel like i should just put it on youtube because coming out with a cd and like nobody buys it it's kind of like mm, it's kind of a bummer okay <laughs> all right i'm gonna wipe off all this uh baking that I did I think it should be good enough I'm gonna go back with contouring a little bit I want my nose to be a little bit more snatched so I'm going back with the Kevin a coin contour right here using the hackle little brush this is like a pencil brush I'm gonna go in right here with this color and kind of brush it out and then blend out and snatch my nose even more give it a nice pinch there's my contour I'm going to just kind of like brush off a little bit with my La Prairie um, powder foundation in the color cameo just kind of give it a nice blend <sighs> all right right here especially i can still see that um zit that i had not zit i'm sorry i can still see that uh scar that i had i created myself last week let's cover that up a little bit let's move on to blush i'm going to use the where's my blush around here everything's everywhere blush where are you blush oh my goodness Tell me I have blush. Um, I think the only blush I see right now is this Girlactic one. I'll just use it. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use the Girlactic blush in coral. It's a cream blush. So I'm going to take that with my fingers and just kind of give it a nice, like, tap. Because I already put powder on my face. Let's just not move my um, foundation around. Let's tap it. Ooh, this is a pretty color. I do like products from Girlactic. I feel like their products are really nice and especially their um what do you call it their matte lipstick oh my god so good so pretty and non-drying so i'm gonna go over that with this brush right here this blush brush because it's a cream blush i want it to sit and not like be sticky on my face just kind of settle in rush rush brush i have like literally half an hour i don't want to like okay because i have to rehearse my songs my english songs moving on to um Highlighter. I'm going to use the Becca highlighter in the color Champagne Pop to give it a nice pop. Yeah, no CD coming up soon. Just um, honestly, just products whenever I want to on YouTube. Maybe I'll have occasionally I'll have a music video here and there. Music videos are a lot of work and a lot of time and effort and a lot of money. A lot. Yeah. So in general, I kind of always felt left out in this industry because it's kind of like that oddball that's just singing random songs on the weekends and then for your cd you're kind of like trying to grind and like get the best of you on there and then nobody really cares <laughs> because that's not the market it's, 
it's like weird for those of you who actually follow i really appreciate you guys um supporting whether it's just watching or just subscribing or whatever i really appreciate your ongoing support let's put some on the chin yes let's put some on the chin and then the cupid's bow the nose the bridge of the nose and then let's go underneath my eyebrow bone right here and I'm gonna go into my inner corners right here. I love putting it here, it's so pretty. And it just gives you a nice pop of freshness in your eyes. It just brings out everything like that much more. Now I'm going to use the color Crush and put it on my lips by Huda Beauty. These small like lipstick, I really, really love. I feel like they're, they're so cute and the colors are so pretty. All of them apply it on my lips. This comes on really like watery and you have to kind of take your time. It dries a lot slower than a lot of matte lipstick, but when it does, it's so pretty. <gasps> That's my stomach growling. <laughs> oh my God. I haven't eaten all day. It's like literally um, five o'clock and no food yet. So let's uh, finish up this look and uh, get some food in my belly. Oh my god, those are some dry lips, honey. <laughs> I need to put some, like, moisturizer next time. It's like kind of rushing today. Last step is the MAC Fix... <sighs> Alright, last step is the MAC Fix Plus. I'm going to just set everything together on my face. This is all I have, literally. Let's try to get to work. Not even spraying on my face, it's like squirting on my face. That means get a new one. <laughs> All right, let's find out where I have any other fix plus. Nope, nothing. I said last drop. Let's do it. <laughs> Blow it like no other. It's supposed to be like a mist. Right now it's just like. <laughs> looks like the rain just rained on my face. Let's get myself some blush. I want, I want to look more clowny. More clown, please. All right, guys, so I'm done with my makeup. Thanks for joining me today. Um, what's next for me, honestly? I'm just kind of like doing my own thing, coming out with my own music, doing these tutorials for you guys, vlogging, just being happy, really. I don't know what's going to come in the future. People always ask me if I'm going to come back to sing on the productions, honestly. Um, they've asked me, but I just feel like at this point in my life, I don't want to compromise my happiness and, you know, do certain things I don't want to do. So if it's something that I feel that it's comfortable for me and I, I'm happy to do it, then I will, I will sing for the program. But if it's not and I have to do another oldie, then no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so um, there's your answer. All these years, I don't know what else to say, but now that I'm kind of like more open and like in front of the camera and trying to like be more connected with you guys and also bettering myself at the same time, I feel more comfortable to tell you how I was feeling, what I was going through. Anyway, um, thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys enjoyed my story. If you guys like it, give it a thumbs up for this video and subscribe if you're new here. And uh, what else is there? And let's just stay connected. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, and wish me luck. I'm singing English songs. Yay! <laughs> it used to be a struggle for me to sing Vietnamese song, which it still is. I kind of slur my words here and there, and especially in the studio, I have to be like, ah, to get that word, like, rounded off and everything like that. But I'm starting to, like, get used to it. But now, singing English is kind of like, oh my god, what am I going to sing? So yeah, the struggles. All right, catch you guys next time. Bye, toodles. I don't know if I was gibbering too much. Was I gibbering too much? I sweat my balls off right now. I think I'm done. I know more. No more gibber jabber.